The Goat House is back, and the NFL trade rumors are starting to swirl. They're starting to heat up as we are a step closer to the deadline. Today, I have six trades that make perfect sense, so much sense that they could happen and happen at any given time. Let's take a look at these scenarios. How about Deontay Johnson of the Kansas City Chiefs? Obviously, they could be looking for a receiver because the injuries as we approach the deadline, I think Johnson makes a lot of sense. I think he actually makes a little bit more sense than Cooper Cup, who we'll talk about. And I do think the Chiefs are a landing spot for him. They're looking for, potentially looking for a slot receiver, and he is now possibly being shopped on the block here. But I think Johnson, since he has an expiring deal, not super expensive, maybe the Chiefs don't want to be locked in with anyone long-term because they have good receivers. They just kind of could use a guy now and if they you know they have the freedom to possibly extend Johnson beyond this year where Cup is yeah they can move on from him in the future but he does have a couple more years on the on his contract it just doesn't really feel like a Chiefs move this one feels more like that Chiefs move when it comes to wide receivers and how they've handled their business at that position recently so fourth round pick going to the Panthers the Panthers could have some sort of a sale as the trade deadline approaches because they are struggling and I keep hearing that Johnson doesn't want to sign long term with the Panthers I guess that makes sense I guess it's a little bit to be determined though perhaps but keep hearing that from legitimate sources so I thought this deal made a lot of sense Johnson going to the Chiefs and he can kind of fill in for the slot that's where he played his best ball with the Steelers, but he also can play outside, so that kind of helps the Chiefs in multiple scenarios here, and the Panthers get a pick, a better pick than what they got, or what they traded away, I should say, to get Deontay Johnson. So it kind of looks like a win-win for both teams there. Uh, one I definitely could see. It makes, again, makes a lot of sense here. Now on to Cooper Cup, who is the newest big trade candidate here. It almost sounds like the Rams are shopping him, calling around, so that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of teams could be interested in him. We talked about the Chiefs, the Steelers, another one. Several teams. The one that makes the most sense to me, by far the most sense to me right now today, would it be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Now, there is one thing stopping this from happening, but let me talk about why it makes so much sense here. One, Chris Godwin just went down for the year. Mike Evans also is injured. They need receivers, but Godwin is the key here. He is a big-time slot receiver that has been awesome with Baker Mayfield. Done for the season. He's on an expiring deal, so don't for sure have him next year. Who knows when he's going to be healthy. They need a guy, and Cooper Cup is a similar, very similar style slot receiver, so would plug right in. Talk about plugging right in. Liam Cohen is the Buccaneers' offensive coordinator. He was with the Rams for quite some time. Re most recently when he was with the Rams, he was the offensive coordinator, but at one point he was an assistant receiver coach right in Cooper Cup's prime, so he knows Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup knows him. He can fit his system. He'd come in and plug play fit right in right away and help the Bucs. The Bucs are trying to win right now to that explosive offense. We talk about it. Explosive offense and they're they're not looking to throw in the towel here. So makes a ton of sense for those you know those reasons. Who knows when Mike Evans will be back with the you know a tricky hamstring injury but a couple will be replacing Godwin. I guess what's stopping it from happening, you know pretty expensive. The Rams said they could pay a portion of it. He is under contract for multiple years. I mean the Bucks are you know thinking ahead. They're like we just want Chris Godwin back in that role. Even if he's injured, we want to sign him back. So they'll be left with a bit of a tricky situation if they trade for Cup going into free agency. Uh, what to do with the remainder of his contract and what do they sign Godwin? Is he, when is he going to be good to go? So that's the tricky part, but there are so many things that make it make sense. Like I explained, like the fit, the need, they're trying to win. They have multiple injuries there. They need, yeah, they need a receiver right now. And the Liam Cohen connection there is big. Third round pick is what I did. It's a little tricky right now. We know the Rams are seeking a second and they're willing to pay a portion of his contract to get a second. And sometime at this time of the year, that's the big thing on why the value drops because guys are super expensive. But if they pay a big portion, well, they can't pay a huge portion, but if they pay a, por pay a portion of that contract, maybe they can you know get some more value. But even a, I think a fourth is more likely than a second. Second seems a little rich just because give, given the uh, the injury history, the recent injury history of Cooper Cup. So I don't know if teams are throwing, you know, would a, te would a team like the Bucks even throw a third round pick uh, at them? You know, So again, it could be a fourth round pick at that point. Do the Rams want to pay a portion? Do they even want to trade him? So pretty pretty uh, unique uh, tr potential trade or trade candidate here with, with uh, Cooper Cup, but yeah, that's why I thought the Chiefs, it's a lot of obstacles here. They don't want to spend a lot of money. They don't want to be locked in for the future. Not that they're like for sure locked in with him, but he's under con he's under contract for a couple years. Does have, you know, so, uh, pricey roster bonuses on there as well. So that is the the contract 
now in the future is the tricky part when it comes to Cup and maybe what could prevent him from being dealt. But who makes the most sense right now is actually the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the reasons I explained. So things getting interesting with the Rams here. I think wins and losses in the near future, these next couple weeks, starting with Thursday night this week, uh, will determine what they do because if they start to pick it, if they beat the Vikings and they start to pick it up, I mean, I would imagine they keep the band together, right? And they, and they go for it because that NFC West seems to be winnable, but they are looking out for their future. So, again, uh, Cup is a new big candidate that's very unique, very interesting here for several reasons. Mike Williams is a guy that we know could be dealt at any given time before Devonta Adams was traded. I said, watch out for Mike Williams. And Steelers seem to be connected to him. The Saints, the Chargers. It'd be weird if the Chargers trade for him after just letting him go. I, I don't know if I would fully agree with that. I know the circumstances because the contract are a little different. But the Steelers definitely could be in the mix for Cooper Cup. They seem to be in the mix for any time a receiver is available. And Cooper Cup could definitely help them. They need some more help from the slot specifically. But what is Arthur Smith's type of receiver? It's Mike Williams type. It's a George Pickens type. Pickens is far better than Mike Williams. But there's a similar style of receivers that have just always worked and have always been the target in Arthur Smith's offense. And we saw, you know, George Pickens being clutched with Russell Wilson last week. I mean, Friar Muth was very productive. It's just these physical guys that Russell Wilson can, can trust and get the ball over uh, the top two in, in um, contested catch situations. So Mike Williams is another guy that kind of fits that and can help that. So it just seems like a really good fit. And the Steelers, I think, kind of are go big or go, like, go big. Ayuk was that go big if you're going to spend a lot uh, in terms of draft capital or go home you could trade for a guy like Mike Williams that can help you he's a fit and it's really low risk here with a seventh round pick and I know that seems very low but Mike Williams post injury hasn't been right is he fully there he hasn't been good with the Jets the Jets haven't been good though but uh, I mean even his quarterback Rodgers throwing him under the bus a little bit so he just hasn't been great right now I do think he can get better as the year goes on a better fit with the Steelers if he were to go there that would make some sense but it feels like the Jets it's it's all like hey we're trading them Mike Williams wants to be traded we're trading you in other teams know that so there really isn't any leverage I think they're just looking to dump him so I could see I don't I fit would be too rich it would make no sense again expiring deal hasn't looked fully right even though I do I think he could be better six would make some sense the Steelers don't have a six this year they uh, could trade uh, the 2026 six, so I thought about that as well. 2026 six, but again, it, it just sounds like this is just going to happen. They're going to ship them out. Seventh round pick makes sense. Even a pick swap could be possible here, which would be pretty good value. Uh, but sometimes teams rather just trade a seventh than give up a six, even if they get a seventh back. So we'll see. This is what makes the most sense for sure for Mike Williams. But the Steelers could be looking to scratch that. Hey, let's jump in on Cup or one of these other guys here. So we'll see. Another receiver that could be dealt at any time up until the trade deadline. Someone we already knew about, DeAndre Hopkins. The Titans aren't playing him a ton, actually. They're really dividing up the snaps. And they're really struggling. One of the worst teams in football right now, actually. So it feels like they're gearing up to trade him. Could happen now. Could happen closer to the deadline. I think it's more likely closer to the deadline because of his kind. A little pricey this year, even though it's an expiring deal. But how about the 49ers? More in need of a receiver now. Of course, they get Pearsall back, but... They're already they already had the durability concerns of the receiver position, and now their guy that's supposed to be, that's supposed to be durable is Brandon Ayuk, and now he's out for the season. So definitely could use a receiver, and they're definitely still trying to compete. They will believe, they will be confident, they can win their division and more as they will get some, not all of those guys back healthy at some point. McCaffrey being the big one, so go get a receiver. They got Pearsall working back, you know, working in there as a rookie. He could play very well from the slot. Go get an outside receiver that. Uh, Really could do it. Still could do a little bit of everything. I still think Hopkins still has some in the in the tank there. That would make sense, especially because he has an expiring deal. The 49ers have loads of cap space right now for this year. Of course, they want some to roll over for the future because they need that extra space in the future, uh, just to have, but also to extend Brock Purdy if they want to do that, which it feels like they they do. Uh, but they do have a lot of spending money this year. They don't want to spend all of it, but they would be able to afford Hopkins is the point. But fourth round pick, could even see a fifth round pick, aging veteran. I still think he's really good. Titans, you know, don't need him at all. It's wise for them just to take something for him. So the Titans could lose a little leverage. I could see a fifth round pick or I could see a fourth and then maybe like a seventh going to the 49ers as well or a six, something like that. Some sort of swap deal. Definitely could see that, but still a really good receiver and teams are scrambling for wide receivers right now. Teams are possibly bidding for them. I could see Hopkins to 
the Chiefs for sure. I could see the Ravens, the the Steelers, the you know, teams, the typical teams that need a receiver. Uh, you know, maybe the Bucks, but I think they're in the market for more of a slot receiver. Uh, makes sense for the Niners given the fit, the type of player, the, you know, the veteran, polished veteran he is, and, and they they don't want a guy long term. I don't believe they just signed Ayuk long term, so expiring deal makes it make sense. Titans got to be sellers at deadline, especially with a guy with an expiring deal. So, I actually love this one. Even with like Cup for for the Niners, but would the Rams trade him there? Do they want that future year, those future years on his deal? And they have Pearsall, who is that young version of him that you know poor man's but uh, so we'll see what happens here but the Niners a new team in the market for a receiver let's stop talking about receivers here we'll talk about a pass rusher Ogbo Okoronkwo from the Browns to the Lions makes a lot of sense I know the Lions are looking for a pass rusher at one point they're saying they're going to stay put because they have some solid guys they could do that but it sounds like they could look to add someone they're going to try to get somebody better first I know a lot of rumors about Max Crosby, I, I just do not see the Raiders trading him. You got a guy like that. I think he's off limits. I know the Raiders aren't good right now, but Max Crosby could be part of the long term future as well. It's kind of a mistake people make. Like, oh, team's struggling. They got to trade this star piece they have so they can build for the future, but that star piece sometimes could be part of the future. So I don't see that. People mentioned Trey Hendrickson. Love the fit, I and mean, the Lions would love to have him. I think the Bengals would have to start losing quite a few games leading up to the deadline so we'd have to wait to the deadline for that one and if, if the Bengals are losing games like crazy uh, then yeah they they trade him but if they're competing they're not going to trade him if they're competing which they are right now they're starting to win and I feel like that's a team that they're going to be stubborn with giving up on competing as they should be with the talent they have so for those reasons, I don't see them trading Hendrickson. I know he was a trade candidate earlier in the offseason. I don't see it now unless the Bengals just lose every game up into the deadline and a maybe at that point. Maybe they trade him, but I would love the fit. So there really isn't a whole lot of obvious ones, like great ones, great options at the pass edge rush position available for the Lions. So maybe just go get a solid guy with experience that could start or also could be a high-end rotation guy. And that to me, that's Oak Ronquo. And the Browns could be sellers at this point as well. Could be had for a sixth, maybe even a seventh. I, I think he's actually more talented than that. Still has another year on his contract. Pretty cheap, you know, pretty um, favorable for the team. So, and it wouldn't be guaranteed next year either. So, sixth round pick would make some sense. I think he would help the Lions. I think he'd be pretty good there. So, uh, that's a guy to watch leading up to the deadline as there, there are thin numbers on legit edge rushers that could be available at the deadline. This is actually a decent one here. Don't sleep on Oak Ronquo here. Could definitely help out the Lions or any other team that could be interested. Jonathan Jones, the Patriots corner, is a guy that I, I fully expect to be dealt by the deadline. The Patriots aren't playing him all that much, and he's a very solid corner that can play outside, inside, very solid in experience and man coverage. So, And he's on expiring deal. So Patriots, rebuilding team, why not flip him for anything? His value is down compared to where it would have been a couple years ago. But I still think he's good. I love the experience uh, in man and inside and out. The Chargers make a lot of sense. Quite a few teams make sense. What about the Ravens, the Vikings, the Jags, possibly more. But the Chargers make some sense. They're a little thin on corner as it is, and they're very thin on corner right now because of injuries. Of course, they will get Asante Samuel back. Uh, pretty soon, Asante Samuel Jr. That is, uh, but Fulton dealing with some things, and you know, is he the best you know starting corner? And you know, they're, they're kind of scrambling for guys right now, and getting a guy that can help you outside and in. So if somebody else comes back, you know, Cam Hart stepping up, I believe in Cam Hart, you know, the rookie from Notre Dame. But if you know Jones can come in there and start at outside corner, right? This is a trade that would actually make sense right now. I haven't heard anything about it right now, but he come and start at outside corner. Asante Samuel Jr. comes back, and you want to keep starting Cam Hart on the outside or Fulton out there. If he's out, you can put Jones on the inside. So I know they have, uh, you know, a couple DBs that can play there as well, but uh, you kind of can mix and match, get creative. It just feels like a move they would make and it'd be cheap. They're not looking to spend big time draft picks. You know, they, they moved on from guys. They're trying to add draft picks if they can, but if they could add a corner, they could be at the Chargers, another team to watch for some of those receivers as well. But yeah, they kind of devalue the position. Now all of a sudden trading like a big pick for one, I guess wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, but they could do it, we've heard. Uh, but I watch for them for corners as well as they're dealing with some things. Jonathan Jones makes sense. It's a scheme fit. Uh, very cheap. I, I think it would only be like a six-round pick uh, as right now because not playing a ton of snaps, or well, at least last week he didn't, and he is a, you know, a veteran expiring deal. So it would be pretty good value for the Chargers there, and the Patriots get something pretty much possibly out of nothing, 
they would get a comp pick, I guess, in the future, not next year, the year after, if they let them walk in free agency. But it would be they're looking to add a lot, so that it could you know, it's a cancellation process. So I don't know if they would be able to get that much better as a comp pick, and that would be in the future, not this upcoming draft. So this trade made a lot of sense here, but there, it would make sense with a few different teams that I mentioned. But yeah, big receiver video. A lot of those receivers are the talk, and teams are scrambling. They're fighting. They're possibly bidding for them. So love those fits. And guys don't always go for that number one fit that makes the most sense, so we could have some predictions uh, you know as we get in these are essentially i think they're realistic picks here i definitely think they could happen but we could have some more predictions and, and candidates and rumors and landing spots as we a pro approach the deadline which is a little later this year but it's getting there you know early november but check out all of our content we have weekly picks score predictions power rankings and a lot more so turn over cages on and subscribe you much appreciated to join us for all that content it's going to do it thanks for watching Goodbye.